The question raised in one of the Eastern Cape newspapers this weekend is Grahamstown in danger of losing the famous National Arts Festival. Organizers have reportedly said the town is decaying and they're considering moving it elsewhere. Is this true? The festival's chief executive officer, Tony Lancaster, joins us now via Skype. Tony, good afternoon to you. You're quoted as saying it's becoming increasingly difficult to justify the National Arts Festival remaining in a decaying Grahamstown. What fundamentally is the problem? Good afternoon, Jeremy. Yes, uh, you, you're quite right. That was the story in, in the papers over the weekend. Uh, and Grahamstown, like many cities and many small cities and municipalities around the country, uh, we are experiencing some challenges. But it's absolutely not true that organizers are currently making plans to move it elsewhere. Uh, it's, uh, that, that's complete conjecture and pie in the sky. What we said uh, during a meeting with uh, Dr. William Kieze, the Minister of Cooperative Government, uh, who was in Grahamstown last week, uh, uh, what we just did was we described the situation in the city. We spoke about some of the decaying infrastructure that is certainly not new to those of us who live here, those of us who've been to the city in the last couple of years. Uh, and we flagged the possible risks of this infrastructure decay that uh, that has been ongoing. Uh, and yes, I suppose there's a logical conclusion that if it is allowed to decay to beyond a certain point, uh, not just the festival, but a whole lot of activity that happens in this town um, is at, at risk or under threat. But there are certainly no plans to move the festival. I'm anymore. assuming, though, Tony, that unless there is some urgent intervention and the uh, infrastructure continues to decay um, it's going to become increasingly more difficult to attract people to the festival where it's difficult for instance to procure water sometimes I think that's a fair point, and that's certainly something that we engage with. But what is new, what is um, really uh, taking the city by storm at the moment, is this giant move movement by civic society. So we're seeing local businesses, we're seeing the institutions, we're seeing the residents of Grahamstown, um, and we're seeing the established events like the National Arts Festival all pull together and say, you know what, we don't want our town to fall apart. Uh, we're going to intervene and we're going to um, step in. And what we're seeing is a whole lot of initiatives where um, those local groupings are investing in their own infrastructure. Rhodes has its own water trucks. Uh, the festival brings in its own water trucks to make sure that visitors to the festival can have a safe, comfortable experience. So those things are real. What we are saying is that there are a lot of contingency plans that have to be put in place. Putting those plans in place is possible, but it does distract us from perhaps some of the other things we'd like to do, focusing on growth, fo focusing on innovating, and so on. Um, but this new energy that's taking place in the city, it really is seeing a lot of public-private partnerships happen uh, at every level of government. The minister, when he was here last week, was very quick to point out that there's no big pile of cash that he's bringing with him. Uh, there's no major investment that the city can uh, expect or demand from the national fiscus. Um, but uh, if everyone works together between us, there's a lot of brain power in Grahamstown. We can certainly find a lot of solutions to the problems that we face as a, as a city. In terms of those problems, the participants in the festival, and for that matter the sponsors, are they at this point raising concern? Uh, no, no more so than you go to Cape Town at the moment. They have water challenges as well. Now, that's obviously driven mostly by the drought, uh, but we have a drought here in the Eastern Cape as well. So these things are spoken about. But because they're spoken about, we're able to address them. Uh, in 52 days' time, the festival is opening up. We've got a program this year that's probably one of our strongest in recent years. Uh, it's an amazing program. We've got thousands of performances that take place over 11 days. We've just opened booking for it now. Uh, the festival this year is going to be as amazing an experience as it is all the time, every year, because we put a lot of effort into making sure that that is the case. So we work hard with the municipality, with local government, to make sure that our visitors have a safe and comfortable experience. And that's really where our focus is. Uh, and yes, there's some long-term planning that needs to be done. There's some long-term interventions that need to take place. And we're working as part of those as well. But we don't want to distract from the fact that this year's festival is going to be as amazing as ever. In terms of revenue generation, what does the festival bring to Grahamstown? Uh, the last study was done in 2016, uh, and the festival contributes about 370 million rand to the GDP of the province and about 94 million rand to the GDP of the city of Grahamstown. Um, it's a big employer. We directly employ about 400 people for the course of the festival, most of whom, 80% of whom, it's the only job they have the whole year. Uh, and then obviously there's a ripple effect uh, throughout the town, um, restaurants, bars, hotels and so on, all have to staff up and, and pull in extra staff. So uh, in terms of creating short term jobs. Um, it's a hugely important part of the local economy. Uh, and for that reason, uh, we are able to have conversations with the Premier of the province, with the MEC for Finance of the province, to, to sit and look at these problems, and for the province and for the national government to start taking it a bit seriously. And we're certainly seeing that happening.